15 years. Hi and welcome to This Is Your Life. Well, tonight we're off to the theatre to surprise one of Australia's most popular and successful leading ladies. At the age of six, she told her mum she was going to have a life on the stage. As a teenager, she actually worked as a busker on the streets of Melbourne. And at the ripe old age of 19, she auditioned for the chorus in a musical and ended up getting the leading role. Today, she's still very much the star. At the moment, in the production of Merry Widow at Sydney's Lyric Theatre. And that's where we're going to surprise her, in front of over a thousand people. So, let's do it. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Marina Pryor. You're wondering what you're going to wear. <laughs> I just, I just didn't think it's <laughs> Marina Pryor, you were born in Papua New Guinea on the 18th of October 1963. There you are. Your father, Graham, is a government officer stationed in Port Moresby. There's also your mum, Pat, and your older brother, Colin. Now, even as a baby, you are no stranger to the theatre, as your parents are the stars of the local music hall productions. We realised at an early age that show business would be her life. It's your mum, dad and brother, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> Graham, if I could start with you, when when was it evident that Marina would take to the stage? Oh, at a very very early age, she was always singing and dancing and skipping around all over the place. How old? Uh, probably about twelve months. <laughs> Even, well, so she was singing. Not biased at all. Not biased. At, <laughs> singing and dancing before she could walk. Well, she was walking at nine months. <laughs> And, and please tell me, Pat, when did you realise that, uh, that Marina would sort of take off as she has? 
Well, I made her a dance, a pink dress, and she called it her dancing dress, and she used to. <laughs> there it is. And used to dance around in the dress and swirl round and tippy toes and do everything and explain to everyone that she was a wonderful dancer. Then I thought, <laughs> maybe, you know. So, and modesty as well. Yes, that's right. <laughs> and at the age of six, she told me that she was going on the stage. And Colin, you and Marina have always been particularly close as brother and sister, haven't you? Yeah, we have. There's only uh, 18 months between the two of us. <laughs> and we've done pretty much everything together. And, uh, <laughs> well, as a for instance... That stopped after about the age of <laughs> well, 24. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, on uh, behalf of the family, congratulations, and we do love you. Thank you, I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come back. <laughs> Graham, just before you go, if I could, um, those days in Moresby were pretty idyllic, weren't they, for, for oh, a young they family? they certainly were, Mike. Um, and she was a beautiful little girl, and she was only this big, and she used to dance around in the garden, but always under the very watchful eye of her nanny, Aga, who uh, uh, loved Marina, absolutely adored her. And as a matter of fact, Marina was only 15 months old when we left Port Moresby. And uh, on that day, Aga took Marina and Colin down into the bottom of the garden and hid them <laughs> so, that, <laughs> so that we couldn't take them back to, uh, back to Australia. And you've kept in contact with her? Oh, no, no. She went back to the village and we've lost her. Guess who we've found, Marina? After 34 years, no. and all the way from Papua New Guinea, Nanny Agatha. No. We should also explain that, uh, that uh, Aga has never been on an aeroplane before and flew straight from Port Moresby to here and uh, she's still not quite sure about aeroplanes. Oh, that's wonderful. What a wonderful gift. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. We can't do that. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming on. We appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. In 1965, the family moves to Melbourne. You start school and continue to develop that fascination with anything musical. First it's the recorder, then the guitar, yeah. piano lessons, the flute, and then of course classical singing. Two major influences during these times are your music teacher, Jeff Gore, oh, yeah. and singing coach, Merlin Quaife. <laughs> When did you spot Marina's potential? I could see that uh, she was going to do very well. It took me a little while to really, uh, after teaching her for a while, to discover that she really did have a lot of talent. And uh, with a little bit of encouragement and a few extra special things, such as uh, guitar and singing, she really developed her confidence. And we know and love the wonderful voice that she has now. And we're particularly thrilled that your three CDs are doing very well. <laughs> yeah. And one gold and one platinum, no less. <laughs> but in fact, Marina's first album was recorded in 1975. It was. 24 <laughs> years ago, Mike. That was her first and beginning of her career. And that was called The Sounds? The Sounds Single of Single South. South. 
which we just happened to oh, have. Oh, nice. goodness. <laughs> <please don't. laughs> And Merlin, you've been Marina's voice coach now for, what, 20 years? She's my toughest critic, definitely. And what I really love, sounds weird, but what I love about Merlin is she tells me when I'm rotten because a lot of people don't. <laughs> they don't. And they'll just say, oh, that's yeah. lovely, that's lo lovely. But Merlin... That's my job. She tells me yeah. the absolute truth. And but I have to say, best. her dedication and discipline and professionalism has really turned her into the star that she is. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Thank, thank you both for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Marina, at high school, you're an extremely bright student, very popular with the boys, and you also form a very close bond with a certain group of girls. I do. You all become known as the Rat Pack, <laughs> and tonight they send you this. Marina, I remember Rocking Chair Man. I remember the endless practices for the school chorals. You wrote it, you conducted it. And my vocal cords were destroyed trying to keep up. <laughs> Marina, remember this? Space City Rollers. We went to the concert and Graham was very worried about your white roller strollers. You could see your undies. Marina, I remember all of those boyfriends. Remember that particular one, the boy that liked to hunt pigs and ride motorbikes? What a catch. <laughs> Marina, do you remember catching the train home from school? We just had to get off a station earlier than we needed to, to have a cigarette, a perfume cigarette, and, and just to regroup before we got home. My father never understood the one-hour conversations. Borrowing my sister's book of the joy of sex kept us occupied. I'm not going to go into what I can remember. But Marina, it's wonderful that you're being honoured on This Is Your Life tonight. But seriously, none of us are surprised given how talented you were and the dreams that you held so close when you were a young girl at school. You deserve all the success that you have achieved, not only because you are a great artist, but you're a great friend as well. And from all of your old friends who couldn't be there with you tonight, congratulations and have a fantastic night. Cheers, Marina. Well, at 15, you start singing and playing guitar in cafes and restaurants around Melbourne. 21 years ago, you even try out on Bert Newton's oh, New Faces. Oh, great. Oh, I knew this would <laughs> And here it is. Oh, no. Oh, my good. Look at my You look, you look younger today. Than yeah, you did. it was something to do with the hair and the nose, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've, you've finished school and enrol in a music education degree to fall back on if your planned career in the theatre fails. You even get out busking in Burke Street Mall to help pay the bills, mm -hmm. true? Yes, very true. We were wondering, as we go to the break, if Mike gives you the guitar, could you take us back to those busking days with one of your numbers? One of my numbers? Oh. Mm -hmm. I can sing that one, I think, but I just... Uh... Bows and flows of angel hair And ice cream castles in the air I've looked at clouds that way But now they only block the sun They rain and snow on everyone So many things I could have done But 
clouds got in the way. Welcome back to the Lyric Theatre and the life of Australia's leading lady, Miss Marina Pryor. Marina, at 19, you attend your first ever audition. It's for the chorus of the Victoria State Opera production of The Pirates of Penzance. You're speechless when producers call you back again and now ask you to audition for the lead role. And what's more, you actually get it. <laughs> now, that's almost a script in itself, isn't it? It is. It wasn't... I don't think I kind of realised and until I sort of could see in retrospect that um, that's quite an amazing thing to happen to someone. But I think I was so young that I just sort of didn't think about it at the time. I just did it. <laughs> and on reflection, it was probably a good thing, maybe. Yeah, probably, because I, if I thought about it, I probably would have started doubting myself and getting really scared of what I was doing. But, yes, it was amazing. Well, your co-stars from Pirates, of course, are June Bronhill and Simon Gallagher, who join us now. June, that's an incredible, an incredible break for someone so young. Oh, naturally, yes. I was young when I had my break as well. <laughs> <laughs> you were fantastic. 